What's up everyone? Welcome to Rex Engine. I've been getting a lot of requests lately to make a video showing you how to animate new character sprites in Rex Engine, and so this will be that video. Now the cool thing with the way Rex Engine does this is that it's actually really, really easy. Um, you don't have to do any scripting, you don't have to mess with Unity's animator states too much. Basically you just make your animation and then you can slot that into the action where you want it to play, and Rex Engine handles all the heavy lifting for you and makes it play at the right time. Uh, so, without further delay, I'm going to start this by making a new scene for us to test this in. So I'm going to go to Tools, Rex Engine, uh, set up level scene. And that's going to give us a big blank scene that has everything we need to test out if this is working. Um, so we can see here the big uh, white burst thing is the spawn point for the player. So I'm just going to hit play and test that and make sure we can move. And it looks like we're good. Um, and then I'm going to create a blank enemy for us to animate. So I can do that by going to Game Objects, uh, Create Rex Engine, Create Blank Enemy. Very aptly named, I know. And that's going to give us this generic Triceratops dude. Um, so by default, this guy has a little arm swinging animation that I kind of like. Um, and instead, uh, we're going to skin this guy to look a little bit different in honor of Halloween. So I've got this zombie dinosaur thing, which uh, may or may not be ripped off of Castlevania, but I, I didn't say that. And I've got all of those sprites imported into Unity down here in their own folder. And so what we're going to do is we're going to give that animation to our Triceratops. So I'm going to rename this guy, Zombie Dino. Um, and we're going to see here he has, the Zombie Dino has his own animator component on the root game object here. And so right now he's using the uh, Tracerobot controller. So I'm just going to remove that so we can start fresh with our own animation. And then I'm going to open up Unity's animator panel or animation panel, rather, and hit create. So it's going to ask us for a name. I'm just going to save my new animation. Give this its own folder. Zombie Dino. Um, and I'm going to make this just a, a default standing animation. So I like to name those defaults, uh, but of course you can name those anything you want. And I'm going to hit add property. Um, and so under there, I'm going to drill down into Sprite Holder, Jitter Holder, Sprites, Sprite, Sprite Renderer, and then I'm going to add the Sprite from the Sprite Renderer. Um, and the reason we have to drill down so far is that there's a lot of these things that need to position themselves independently of the other game objects. Um, so the Sprite, for example, you may want to animate that so it moves around a little bit. And it's useful in that case to have that be a child of another object that stays in the same place. And then uh, jitter, for example, is like when an enemy gets hit, you've got that cool jitter effect where you see the sprite shake a little bit, and it gives the hit some impact. And so the idea with the jitter holder is that there's another game object that has all of those as children, and so that can move independently of your animations. And so basically we are, we're nesting all of these so they, the movement doesn't mess anything up. So we've got the sprite added down here. Um, and so I'm just going to click on that. We can see where it's got the, the first frame of the Triceratops. And I'm just going to make that into the zombie dino. So I'm going to take that, that PNG file and drag that over. Um, and so for this default animation where the guy is just standing here, I'm only going to make it just that one frame for right now. So there's his default animation, and I'm also just going to change the sprite renderer's sprite. So now if we hit play, we should see this guy. It looks like our zombie dinosaur. Cool, he's just standing there. Um, so now let's give this guy a moving animation. So this is also going to be pretty simple. I'm just going to go to the animator, and I'm going to hit a create new clip.
I'm going to save a new clip. And I'm going to do the same process as last time, where I'm going to do add property, and then drill down into sprite holder, jitter holder, sprites, sprite, sprite renderer, sprite. Um, so now I'm just going to I'm going to set this up like you would any other Unity animation, where I'm just going to drag out all of the frames independently onto the timeline here. So that should give us a pretty nice looping animation of this dude walking. So now we have our walking animation. And I want to set this up so that it plays the walking animation when this guy is walking. Um, so if I click on the zombie dino and then open up the control of this game object. Uh, so the controller holds all of the character states, or all of the actions basically this character can do. So walking, jumping, attacking, um, whatever it's got that it can do, it's got a state for in here. So if I click on that, we will see the moving state. Um, and right now, I think it's, it should probably have the Tricerabot's walking animation slotted. Um, yeah. So what I'm going to do is just take the zombie dino walking animation and drag that onto the slot, onto this animation slot for moving state. And so now, Rex Engine is going to handle playing that automatically whenever this guy is moving. Um, so the last thing we want to do there is make this guy move so we can see it. And so under, um, still on the controller object, he's got an enemy AI script here. And under the starting movement section, I'm just going to say left, which is going to make this guy start off by moving left toward the player. So if we test this now, we should see him playing. There we go. <laughs> um, so now we've got our guy playing a default animation when he's standing there, and a moving animation. And just to see the difference of those two um, highlighted next to each other really quick, I'm going to get a little bit fancier than I probably need to. And I'm going to set this guy to only move when the player gets close to him. So we'll be able to see him standing, and then we'll be able to see him moving. Um, so I'm going to set his starting movement to neutral. And then I'm going to set this uh, enable near actor setting here, which basically means that he will not do anything until the player gets close. So let's say when the player gets uh, within five units of this guy, then he should start moving. Action starting to the left. So we've got right now this guy is just standing there, and we should see him start to move as soon as the player gets close. And so the cool thing is, you'll notice um, we have this for every single action this guy is capable of. Uh, so for jumping, the jump state has its own animation where we do the exact same process. Is all you do is you click the clip, the animation clip, that you want to slot into there, and you drag it and drop it. Uh, for knockback, which is what happens when you take damage, you do the exact same process. Um, and then also there's a, underneath the Rex controller, we have defaults, falling, death, and idle, and on enabled also, which is like if, if the enemy spawns from something, then that'll play a spawn animation. Um, so all of those things are options. If you give this guy attacks, it's the exact same process. There's just an animation slot where you can drag and drop the animation. And that's basically it. Um, it's a pretty simple thing. The only thing to really watch out for here is that you need to make sure all of the animation clips you're dragging and dropping belong to 
same controller that is on the animator. Uh, so for example, if I was dragging in animation clips from the Tricerobots controller, when I had the zombie dino enabled here, then that wouldn't do anything. Um, so we just want to make sure we've got the zombie dino here, and we want to make sure every animation clip belongs to that animator controller. And that's pretty much it. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.